Okay, so I will um, continue on here. And so now, um, let me just mention a few other things. We have the idea of independent events. Okay, and so if, if A and B are independent, independent, um, then the outcome of one event has no influence on the outcome of the other event. So, you know, in contrast to our on time and our weather example, you know, if you had clear weather, the probability was on time was 0.9, but if you had not clear weather, the probability of on time flight was 0.6. So, whether you had clear weather or not influenced whether or not the flight was on time. In this case, we would say it doesn't matter if one thing, you know, if flights took off independent of the weather, then that means whether it was clear weather or not, all the flights would have the same probability of being on time. Okay? So we say, uh, in this case, we say the probability of A given B, or B given A, or whatever we want to say, in this case, the probability of A given B would be equal to the probability of what? It's the probability of A. Okay? Whether B has happened or not doesn't matter. The probability of A, given this other piece of information, is just the probability of A. Okay? And likewise, the probability of B given A would then be what? Probability of? B. Of B. Okay? So whether A has happened has no influence. It's just the probability of B. Okay? And so um, this is convenient for, you know, any, anytime you have a sequence of independent events, then what happens to this? Probability of A and B suddenly becomes what? So probability of A and B is always, when we had is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. This becomes then the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, because B given A is just, is now the probability of B if they're independent, okay? So because okay. Okay, so uh, actually that's that's all I want to say about that. We'll, we'll come back to these later on when we're, we're defining um, stuff, okay? So we have, we've kind of gave, I've given you a bunch of rules on probability here, okay? We're going to do something related to probability called random variables, okay? And this is all still just defining probability and all this, but here, um, we're going to uh, define something called a random variable, and this will come into play when I talk about the binomial distribution. Okay, so let's uh, talk about random variables, okay? So some random events, their outcomes are numeric, okay? So if the outcome of a random event is numeric, that outcome can be considered a random variable, okay?
Okay, and so, uh, so, so some examples. Okay, rolling a die, and we look at we look at the face. Okay, that would be a random variable. Okay, we can also um, you know pick a person at random, pick a random person, and ask how many kids do you have? How many children do you have? Okay, so here the event is we're picking a random person, okay, and then the outcome is how many children does that person have? It's, it's a number, okay? So that, that would be also a random variable, okay? Or we can either do pick a person at random, pick a random person, and we measure their height. Okay? Or we can um, flip a coin ten times and count how many times it lands on heads. And these, so these are all examples of random variables. We're doing some kind of random event and we're looking at the outcome of the event, and the outcome of the event is a number. Okay. And so we might ask questions like, what is the mean outcome? Okay, what is the mean of the outcomes? Or what is the mean of the random variable? Okay, so we can ask things like, what is the mean? of the random variable. Okay? And so the mean of the random variable we would say is defined by the letter mu. Okay? Or we can also write it this way. E um, uh, if the random variable is y, okay? So the random variable it takes on the letter y. We can say e of y, and this is kind of uh, another way of saying it is the expected value of y. And this is just saying, um, basically, if we repeated, again, here's our frequentist notion here, if we repeatedly repeated this random trial, many times, approaching an infinite number of trials, Okay, and we measured each outcome, or we recorded each outcome. So every outcome is a number of some kind, right? So if we repeated this random trial many times, and we recorded every outcome, and then calculated the mean of all those outcomes, that would be the mean of the random variable. Dot, that would be the mean. Okay, and then we have um, the variance, sigma squared, which is the variance of y, and then the standard deviation, which is just the square root of that. Okay. And here it's the kind of the same notion, same idea as above, except instead of calculating the mean of all those outcomes, we do the same thing, but we're calculating just the variance, or we're calculating 
the standard deviation. Same thing. But we calculate the variance or standard deviation. So again, the, the notion is every time you do a random trial, you get an outcome, and that outcome is a number. And if you could do it an infinite number of times, and you calculate the mean every single uh, the mean of all of those outcomes, there you get the mean mu. Or you do it and you calculate the uh, the standard deviation or the variance. Then we have this. OK, so with numeric variables, you can have continuous numeric variables, and you can have discrete numeric variables. So discrete means you're taking on certain values only. Continuous means you can take any value with decimals and stuff like that. In our class, we're only going to cover um, at least calculating uh, means and variances and standard deviations for discrete variables. OK, if we could. You can do it for continuous ones, but it requires calculus and integration, and we're not going to do that. Okay, so um, I'm going to um, write the equation here. So the mean e of sorry e of y. Our, our textbook chooses to use y, and x and y are often interchangeable. But the equation for this. is the sum of each outcome y times the probability of taking on that value y. So we just do so each outcome, each outcome times the probability of getting that outcome. Okay? And then add add it up across all outcomes. Okay, so let me pull up our textbook here. Too much. Too far. <clears throat> okay, so let's do this right here. Okay, so here is uh, an example from our textbook, and it says we're, we're looking at. Uh, certain species of fish, okay? And, um, you know, in humans, if we look at your back, we all have, we should have all the same number of vertebrae, right? <laughs> um, but apparently in this species of fish, some fish have more vertebrae than others, okay? But most of them have like 21, okay? 51% have 21 vertebrae, but some have 22 vertebrae, some have 23 vertebrae and some have 20 vertebrae. And we want to know what is the actual mean number of vertebrae. Okay. So I want to, uh, first I'm going to say do not do this. Okay. So do not, do not do, dot, 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 do not do 20 plus 21 plus 22 plus 23 divided by 4, because this would give you um, uh, 86 divided by 4, and that would give you 21.5, OK? So do not do this. This is wrong. What you have to use is this formula here, OK? So use, do do this. Use that mu is y times the probability of getting this thing. 
So we're going to take each outcome, 20. So y is 20, and I'm going to multiply it by what is the probability that, you know, if I randomly select a fish, that it has three vertebrae, I mean 20 vertebrae. That probability is what? Yeah, 3%, so I multiply that by 0.03. Okay. And I do this for all of the outcomes. 21 times 0.51 plus 22 times 0.40 plus 23 times 0.06. Is this, is this okay with everybody? Ah, shoot. I messed this up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just punch this in. I'm going to do 20 times 0.03 plus 21 times 0.51 plus 22 times 0.40 plus 23 times 0.06. Oh, 06. And I get 21.49. Now this is coincidentally, this number is very close to what I would have gotten if I did it the other way, okay? But that's, that's a coincidence of just the numbers that we have here, okay? In other circumstances, doing it this way will give you a number that's significantly different from adding them up and dividing by 4, okay? So you can't just say, well, it came out close, so next time I'm just going to add them up and divide by 4 or something like that. It doesn't work that way. You have to follow this for getting the mean. Are there questions here? So this is the mean of a random variable, okay? All right, and so let's... Uh, now we'll do the, uh, the variance, okay? So the variance, and we're going to use the same example here. The variance is defined as this, okay? We're going to take each value, and we're going to subtract off the mean. So it requires us finding the mean first, and we're going to square that difference, distance from the mean, and then we multiply it by taking, uh, by the probability of getting that value. Okay, so this is um, the distance. Each outcome is from the mean. squared multiplied by uh, you know probability of getting that value okay and then the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. That's all. Okay, so you find the variance and you take the standard deviation. So from the previous page, and again, don't add these up and divide by, or do the standard deviation the way you would the other way, okay? So from the previous page, we know that mu equals 21.49, okay? And so our answer here is going to be we're going to take each value, 20 minus 21.49. I'm going to square that difference, and I'm going to multiply it by 0.03, okay? So I'm going to get here, I'm going to get 1.49 squared times 0.03, and then I do it for all four values, okay? 21 minus 21.49 squared times 0.51 plus 0.03 plus 0.03 plus 0.51 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 plus 0
plus 22 minus 21.49 squared times 0.40 plus 23 minus 21.49. I'm running out of space, times 0.06. Okay, so here I get 0.49 squared times 0.51 plus 0.51 squared times 0 0.40 plus uh, 1.51 squared times 0 0.06. So I do all of this work. Uh, 1.49 squared times 0 0.03. 0.49 squared times 0.51 plus 0.51 squared times 0.4 plus 1.51 squared times 0.06. So my variance is equal to 0.4299. And then the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So I just take the square root of this number, and I get 0 0.6556. Six, Whatever. Something like that. OK, so this is, this is uh, calculating the mean and the variance of a random variable, okay? So again, what is a random variable? A numeric outcome to a random event. Yeah, the numeric outcome to a random event, okay? So here in this case, where the random event is I'm going to pick a fish at random. I'm picking a fish at random, and then I'm counting how many vertebrae are in that fish, because this is of interest to me. And, uh, and I do this, and I say, well, if I do this a whole bunch of times, what's the average number of vertebrae I'm going to see? That average is 21.49. And if I look at a bunch of different fish, what's the standard deviation going to be? OK, well, the difference between the different number of vertebrae is going to be 0.65567, or if I want the variance. So again, this is just a, it's a way to measure the spread. So maybe if we looked at another species of fish, Maybe the standard deviation is uh, 0.2. And what would that tell you about the, uh, the vertebr number of vertebrae in that fish and as far as random variables go? If the standard deviation of the other fish was 0.2 versus 0.6557. Yeah, that means you don't have as much uh, variation in uh, the number of vertebrae. So most of the fish maybe have a certain number, and maybe a few have a different number, but you're not going to have, um, you're going to have less variation there. OK. Is that all right, dealing with random variables here? All good? OK. Let's, um, I'm going to try. Now we're going to um, introduce a binomial random variable. So we have a certain um, special uh, random variable known as the binomial random variable. And this is a certain um, certain situations where you're going to repeat what we call a Bernoulli trial. Just you're going to just repeat a random thing, and every every trial that you do has only two outcomes. We call them success and failure, but basically something happened or it didn't. Okay, and you're going to repeat it a certain number of times, and the random variable is. After this many repetitions, how many successes did we get? OK, so let me just write this down. OK, so you will repeat uh, 
uh, random trial or random yeah a set number of times okay and it's n times okay every um, every trial has only two outcomes okay something happened or it didn't okay so the something happened is known as a success and it didn't would be called a failure now this is these are arbitrary labels, so it could be I'm picking people at random, and we're going to screen if they have cancer, okay? And in this case, being identified as having cancer would be quote-unquote the success. So the success is not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just an arbitrary label, okay? So either something happened or it didn't, okay? The probability of the quote success is the same for every trial. Okay, and that probability is P. And and so this means each trial because the probability of a success is the same for every trial, this also means every trial is independent of each other. Okay, It's not like having more success generates more success or having less success in the beginning changes the probabilities. It's every trial is independent. Okay. And our, um, our outcome of interest is the number of successes after n trials. number of successes we call these the J successes okay so this is all kind of hypothetical mumbo-jumbo let, let me just give you some real-life examples okay and I hope this will give you an idea of what exactly is a binomial situation okay so examples, one situation. You flip a coin eight times. So here n is eight. Um, the probability it lands on heads, probability a coin lands on heads is 0.5. Okay, so p is equal to 0.5. We want to know what is the probability that the coin lands on heads three times out of the eight flips. Okay, so j is equal to 3. Does this make sense? Okay, or it could be another situation, okay? You um, randomly select, or uh, maybe not you randomly select, sorry, let me change that. Um, 100 100 uh, random people volunteer to give blood. OK, 
okay? And we'll say 44% um, of people have type O blood. Okay. What is the probability that you get at least um, 40 counts, or I, I guess 40 people with type O blood? Okay, because you have 100 people. And even though 44% of people in the general population have type O blood, your random sample of 100 people might not all, uh, might be different. So we're asking, what's the probability you get 40 people, or at least 40 people? So 40 people are more with type O blood. Okay. So in this case, my N is what? 100, and my P is... 0.44 and J would be what? At least 40. So 40, 41, 42, all the way up to 98, 99, 100. Okay, because it says at least 40. Is this okay? Alright, so. Um, well, this would be painful to do by hand, manually, but um, this can be done. Okay, so let's um, let's try a simple simple example, and we'll we'll try to work this into um, a binomial situation. Okay, so let's say um, let's do a simple example. Okay, let's say we have um, uh, some weird, a strange coin. And the probability it lands on heads is 0 0.7. Okay, so this coin, you know, you flip it, and it favors landing on heads for whatever reason. Okay, so we're going to flip. You flip the coin three times. Or let's say you flip the coin four times. I'm sorry. Flip the coin four times, and I want to know what is the probability. that it lands on heads twice. OK. All right, so in this case, my n is what? 4, my p is 0.7, and my j is what? 2. OK. So. I'm going to um, I'm going to do a tree first, and this might be a little bit painful, um, but we're going to do it. Okay. So the first coin flip can be heads or tails, and if the first coin flip is heads, then the next one can also be heads or tails. And if that one's heads, then I get heads or tails, and then heads or tails, right? And so I'm going to have a whole bunch of head-tail outcomes. OK, and so you get this uh, this diagram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, OK? So I don't feel like labeling all of these. OK? And every time I go down the to go down the head side, what is the probability here? 0.7, right? And then over here would be 0.3. Okay. And then because it's a coin flip and every coin flip is independent, I would also have 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, right? OK, so if I'm flipping the coin four times, what's the probability that 
it lands on heads twice. That's what I want to know, okay? So let's just look up one example. One way for it to get two heads, I'm flipping a coin four times, I can get this sequence, right? I can get heads, heads, tails, tails. That's one way for me to get um, two heads out of four coin flips. Okay, what is the probability of this sequence happening? This would be 0.7 times 0.7 times 0.3 times 0.3, right? Okay, what's another way for me to get two heads out of four flips? Okay, I can also get heads, tails, heads, tails, okay? And this is going to be 0 0.7 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.3. Right? Heads, then tails, then heads, then tails. Okay. But these two things are exactly equal, right? Because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. I'm multiplying 0 0.7 there twice and 0 0.3 twice. Okay, and so I could go through and I can list off all of the different ways of getting heads and tails, okay? And I can get um, this and okay, and I think this is all, there's six ways, six ways to get two heads in uh, four coin flips. Okay? And all of these, the probability is going to be 0.7 squared times 0.3 squared, right? Whoops. Okay? And so the total probability of getting two heads out of four coin flips is going to be the sum of all of these. I'm going to say is going to be 6 times 0.7 squared times 0.3 squared. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Um, let's say I do the same question, except um, do kind of the same thing, except uh, instead of the coin landing on heads twice, I say three times or thrice lands on heads. Uh, three times. Okay, so now j is equal oops, j is equal to three. Okay, so same idea here. So here I would need three heads. Okay, so four flips, right? And of those, three have to be heads. How many is going to be a tails? One tail, right? And, and now I have to figure out how many arrangements there are, right? I, I can go uh, heads, 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 tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, or tails. This is the only way I could, there are four ways to arrange. Um, three heads among four flips. Are you, are you guys still with me here? Okay, and so the total probability here would then be what? Four times 
0.7 to the third power times point, 0.3 to the first power, okay, or just 0.3. Is that good, good with you all? Okay, and so let me just say the general formula. So here I'm going to now introduce the general formula for binomial. Binomial random variable, okay? So you need n, you need p, and you need j. Okay, so the probability that y takes on some particular value j is equal, and I'm going to leave a blank spot here, but for this 4 is you're going to take the probability of a success, and how many successes do you need? You need j of them, so it's going to be p raised to the j. You're going to multiply that, so that's like getting heads three times. You're going to multiply that by 1 minus p. This is a probability of a failure. And if you need j successes, how many failures do you need out of n trials total? n minus j failures. Is that okay? And so the only thing left here is well, how many different arrangements are there, OK? And so for that, we use, there's um, something called the binomial coefficient. And it's n choose j, OK? So I'll get into what n choose j is. But n c j, also written this way, is n choose j. And that means if you have n items, and j of them are whatever, how many ways can you arrange those? Okay, Or how many ways can you choose j items out of n items? How many ways can we choose j items out of n? out of n items. Okay? The equation for this is uh, n factorial divided by j factorial times n minus j factorial. Now, I personally just like to use the calculator. You don't need to uh, do the factor so like if you have 10 items and you can only fit five of them in your bag how many possible ways are there to arrange it you would do 10 choose 5 okay and so on your calculator if you have the same as me you would do 10 and then you see this NCR so the calculator uses NCR rather than NCJ uh, it's over the division divide key so I do shift divide, and it shows up like this, and you do 10 choose 5, like that, okay? And I hit enter, and it says, oh, if you got 10 items to pick from and you need to pick 5, or you choose 5, there's 252 combinations that you can do, okay? If you've got um, like a TI, you might have to hit like the math button or a probability button and go through the menu in there to find uh, N NCR, Arts and Catalog. I think that, what is that, an 83? Or? Yeah. So there should be like a probability or a math, math button. Math thing. And oh. then you can go to PRB and then all oh. the way to the right, and it should be right there. There it is. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So like 10 choose 5 is 252. Okay. So, so what would I use here? So this 4 is equal to what? 4 choose, 4 choose, Three, right? So this this four is four choose three. If I have four coin flips and I need three of them to be heads, how many ways can I do that? I would do four choose three, and I would get four. Okay. 
And maybe it's worth noting, 4 choose 3 is the same as 4 choose 1, okay? Or 5 choose 3 is the same as 5 choose 2. Okay, so it, uh, choose n choose j is the same as n choose n minus j. Okay, so just think of it this way. If you have five friends, okay, and let's say um, you're going to want to send people to McDonald's to get food for everybody, okay? But let's say your car only fits two people. So you can pick two people to go to McDonald's. How many ways are there to pick two people to go to McDonald's? That would be five, choose two. But choosing two to go to McDonald's is the exact same thing as choosing three people to stay home. So five choosing two to go is the same as five choosing three to stay home. So five choose two is the same as five choose three. Five choose j is the same, or n choose j is the same as n choose n minus j. And that's what we have here. All right. Is this is this okay? I'm just wondering, like, do you know how to do it on the different calculators? Yeah, so you would you would enter ten, and then you'd go into the menu and pick out that NCR function, and then oh, you'd hit five, and then you hit enter, and it should spit out two fifty two. Okay. Should spit out two fifty two. Okay, so this is calculating the answer to the question. So if I said you flip the coin four times, what's the probability it lands on heads three times? You would do 4 choose 3, p, 0.7 to the j, 3, times 1 minus p, which is 0.3, to the n minus j, which is 1. OK, so let's, let's just try an example here. OK, so I'm going to say, uh, yeah. Uh, Ten random people show up to the blood drive. And we will say 40% um, of the population has type A blood. OK? And I'm going to ask, what is the probability that 5 out of the 10 people have type A blood? OK, so I'll give you guys a few minutes to try to solve that. And I'm going to pause the video if you're watching on YouTube. I'm going to pause it right here. I recommend you pause it and take a minute to solve it. All right, so let's do this. I think uh, so if you recognize that this is binomial, all you have to really do is you got to figure out n, p, and j. And so we have n is 10 people. p is the probability of a success. In this case, success would be somebody having type A blood. So p would be 0.4. And we want 5 out of 10, so j is 5. OK, and so we're going to use n choose j times p to the j times 1 minus p to the n minus j. So I'm going to have 10 choose 5 times p, 0.4 raised to the fifth power, times 1 minus 0.4, which would be 0.6 raised to the n minus j, or 10 minus 5, which is also 5. Okay, So this is just a matter of punching this into my calculator. I do 10 choose 5 times 0.4 to the fifth power times 0.6 to the fifth power. Okay, And I get 0.200658. Is that what you guys got over there? Okay, great. So the probability that five out of the ten people have type A blood is about twenty percent. Okay. 
and you know we could go through and we could ask what's the probability that four people have type A blood and etc 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 okay now we could also ask um, these related questions if I repeatedly have blood drives where 10 random people show up and this is kind of a silly question but if this were to happen repeatedly what is the mean number of people with type A blood? What? what, what let, me, let me write this down. So, uh, you know, if we have many blood drives and each time 10 random people come, What is the mean number of people with type A blood? Okay, so basically here I'm just asking what is the mean of y, where y is our binomial random variable, okay? so. And so to do this, we could list off all of the possible outcomes, okay? So um, earlier we learned about calculating the mean of a random variable, and it had, you know, the outcome and the probability, right? You know, the number of vertebrae and the probability of getting that thing, and you'd have to list off all of the different possible outcomes. And we would say, oh, if we're getting 5, that probability is 0 0.20658, OK? But then you'd have to do all of these other calculations and fill out this thing. And then you would have to go through and do um, apply that formula to get it, OK? That would work, OK? There's a shortcut, though, and that is just doing n times p. This is a shortcut for getting the mean when it's a binomial random variable. And this makes intuitive sense, right? If the probability of somebody having random blood, uh, type A blood is 40%, and I've got 10 random people, I would expect 10 times 0.4. I'm expecting four people with type A blood. Okay, so the mean is this. Okay, the standard deviation maybe um, is not as intuitive, but this is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p, OK? So these are shortcuts for getting the mean and standard deviation when it's binomial. So you don't have to do the uh, table method. this all feeling okay all right so let's do a few examples and just check our understanding of the stuff we've covered today <laughs> is that all right oh I will say okay so let me just take an aside in the textbook it, you'll also see the binomial random variable it talks about um, having a mean of p and a standard, so there, okay, so in the textbook, it talks about um, a situation where the mean is p and the standard deviation is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Okay, this, um, there's like two form formulations here. This is if you choose to uh, express your outcome as a percentage. Or you know what? Maybe this is actually, this might be the next chapter. So I'm sorry. Let me just.
Okay, you know what? Forget that I wrote this. I'm sorry. This comes, <laughs> this comes next week. <laughs> okay, so ignore that. I apologize. Um, the textbook does talk about this, and I'll, I'll mention it next week, but it's not a big deal. And I don't, I don't prefer the um, that formulation. So, all right, let's do a let's do an example here. Okay, um, uh, okay. So um, we'll say there is a cheap pregnancy test. It's not very good <laughs> available. Okay, if uh, and this is how it works. Okay, if a woman is pregnant, then the uh, probability that the test shows positive. Positive, so meaning pregnant, is we'll say uh, ninety-nine percent. Okay, so you think, oh, well, that's not so terrible. But if a woman is not pregnant, then the probability of a positive test. is 5%, OK? So that's, that's pretty bad for a pregnancy test. If it says, if it's telling non-pregnant women that they're pregnant 5% of the time, that's a bad test, OK? All right, and, um, and I don't know how this woman knows this, but uh, somehow, Okay, so a woman decides to take a pregnancy test, all right? And, uh, and figures, and I'm not sure how she figures this, but she figures the probability she is actually pregnant, probability she is pregnant, is 0.2, okay? And this is prior to any tests. Okay, so the probability that she is pregnant is, fig figure she's pregnant is 0.2. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you two questions, and let's see if you can do this, okay? What is the probability uh, the woman gets a positive result? Okay. And then the second question is if she does get a pro positive result, What is the probability she's actually pregnant? Okay. So uh, take some time to uh, to work through this. Again, if you're watching on YouTube. Pause your video now and, uh, and try to solve this. Okay, so we'll go over the answer here. And so we start off, and the woman can either be pregnant or not pregnant. Okay, and the probability that she's pregnant. So she somehow figures 
is 0 0.2 versus 0 0.8. Okay. And um, if, uh, if she is pregnant, the test could show a positive result or not. And the probability of showing a positive result is 0.99. And that means this number over here is going to be whoops, 0 0.01. Okay, and if she's not pregnant, sometimes the test still shows positive, and it should show negative, but sometimes it shows positive, and it shows positive 5% of the time, and it shows negative then what? 95% of the time. Okay, so, so far is this good, this set up here? Okay, and so we want to know what is the probability that she gets a positive result? Okay. So she can get a positive result from um, being pregnant and getting the positive results, or being not pregnant and still getting a positive result. Okay? So there's two ways to get this, and that is we can get the positive result here, or we can get the positive result there. Okay, and so we, we're going to do 0.2 times 0.99 plus 0.8 times 0.05. And we do this math here, 0.2 times 0.99, oops, plus 0.8 times 0.05. And they get 0 0.238. Okay, so that is the answer to this question. That's the probability of getting a positive result. And if she does get a positive result, what's the probability she actually is pregnant? That it would be probability of pregnant given a positive result. Okay, and so we're going to do probability of pregnant and positive divided by the probability of getting a positive result. Okay, so what's the probability that she's pregnant and positive and gets a positive result? That would be the result of going down this line, 0 0.2 times 0 0.99, which would be 0 0.198. So I do 0 0.198 divided by the probability of getting a positive result is 0.238. Okay, so I do 0 0.99 times 0.2 and I get 0.188 and I divide that by 0.238 because in the previous part of the problem we calculated the probability of getting positive and I hit equals and I get 0.831932. Okay, so 0.832. Is this okay? All right, and so this might uh, this is probably lower than what you might have imagined, right? So if if you if it says you know if a woman is pregnant, the probability that she gets a positive result is ninety nine percent, and she gets a positive result, you'd think oh she's very likely to be pregnant, but it turns out that number is really only closer to 83%, okay? And the reason is because the false positive rate is fairly high at 5%, okay? 5% false positive rate kind of reduces the, uh, our prediction of this, okay? And this is also factored into um, her original probability of being pregnant to begin with is kind of only is 0.2, uh, and so, so all of this goes into that. Okay, well we're out of time for the day, so uh, we'll see you guys next week. We've got you've got a quiz next week, and uh, I've detailed kind of the things you need to know for the quiz on the uh, on the website there. So we'll see you guys. Uh, have a good night.